Yo, what is going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new episode of the Dual Archives. Uh, as you guys could tell by the title and thumbnail, uh, we're kind of hanging around the same era uh, that we were in the previous episode. And by the way, if you haven't seen the previous episode, it was based Lolly versus Josh Camp, Burning Abyss versus Cliff Fort. And it was a really awesome match. Just goes to show why Burning Abyss was the best deck hands down of that post new challengers format so i highly recommend you guys check it out i'll leave a link to it up in the top right if you guys want to see it um but uh this matchup will not disappoint whatsoever um i literally just finished recording the last episode um and i started watching this video and i was like you know what i should probably just film the next episode um, because I don't want to spoil the entire match. I think I got like 13 minutes in before I was like, you know what? I should probably make a video out of this because this is just this match just like is like it reminds me about like the pinnacle of watching competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Two extremely good players, both Jeff Jones and Ben Leverett, playing some of the absolute best decks of their time. And it's just so satisfying from just like how these guys play their cards, how they handle their cards. The interactions uh, between their decks like it's just so satisfying you guys are going to be in for a real treat and one quick thing before we get into it don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and check out the ways you can support the channel in the description below but let's go ahead and get into this one uh this is arg atlanta third and fourth playoff jeff jones v ben leverett two of the absolute greatest players to ever grace the game um, I don't believe Ben Levitt plays anymore, unfortunately, and I don't know about Jeff Jones. I know he plays, like, he might play here and there. I'm not entirely sure, but, like, these two guys need no introduction. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Jeff Jones is going first on the Danko Doll strategy, um, a deck that he pretty much coined himself. Um, I remember seeing that deck popping up on ARG feature matches like this many, many years ago, and I believe he was the mastermind behind it, at least in part. Um, and Danko was really good because it countered the Klee Fort and the Burning Abyss matchup um, because it just shut down pretty much all forms of back row and also happened to be a light target uh, to be able to go into your construct with, which is exactly what we're seeing here. He's going to normal summon the Mathematician, which was one of the best starters for the deck hands down. Um, that's going to uh, dump the Squamata, uh, dumping a Hedgehog, fueling a Shadal Fusion, um, and then we're going to see him go ahead and use, uh, Shek, or not Shek, Construct, dump the Shadal Core. That's going to go ahead and add back a Shadal Spell or Trap, adding back Fusion, Falco setting itself, um, and setting to and passing. So, like, not the craziest end board, zero interruptions, but, like, Shadal is one of those decks that has a pretty good in-engine card that acts as an interruption, and we're seeing that right now. Everybody's favorite card even in today's day and age, six years later, seven years later, Winda still causing problems. Uh, so Ben starts with Foolish, dumps Graf. Graf is going to attempt to summon a BA from the deck. Jeff, of course, is going to chain his set El Shadal Fusion, fusing off a Construct and that set Falco to go for Winda. Construct will add back and Falco will reset itself. Um, so now if Ben does not have a way to out this Winda, he has no more special summons for the rest of the turn, which is highly problematic. Puts him on having to have a card like Alec, which is the only form of negation in engine that Burning Abyss has access to um, outside of any other forms of multiple special summons, which he obviously does not have access to at the moment because Winda is live. And Ben is just, of course, so good at the game that he has the out he's going to go ahead and normal summon uh the alec crash it into winda and then seer is going to run over the set falco it already triggered this turn so he cannot reset it uh, or flip it up to summon something from grave since he already used one of its effects and then we're going to see him go into a dante um so out of the winda and made sure he doesn't have falco to resolve on the following turn and he's not giving his opponent the mathematician draw um, so like kind of navigating that board really, really well will seem to attach Calcab Mill 3. It's nothing, sets 2, and it looks like that'll be it for his turn. Like 
don't know. I was just watching this match and I was like appreciating just like how it seems like every card these guys play, they just get so much value out of and how they sequence their cards, how they go about setting up their board, um, you know, preparing to make sure they have something on their opponent's turn, being able to out their opponent's board, just like we saw Ben did there. He had to have the answer for the window and he did. So satisfying to watch. Um, maybe I'll be, the be able to say the same thing about our current format seven years from now. Um, but uh, he's going to start with Shadal Fusion. Ben's going to chain Emptiness. Uh, Jeff's going to chain L. And he's going to go for the newest Shadal Fusion at the time, Shekinaga. And Shek's actually going to be able to beat over Dante's 2,500 defense, which is actually relevant here um, because, like, uh, Winda can't do it, obviously. Construct can. Um, but, you know, Shek also gets the job done and can also kind of act as a negate, too, uh, by discarding a Shadal monster. Um, and then, interestingly enough, it only discards a Shadal if it, if it destroys the monster that it's negating. Interesting, like, Shek's worded very weirdly. And it looks like uh, Jeff, almost got their names mixed up, is just going to set two. And I think that's going to do it for his turn. Ben's still having one back row left. And I believe it ends up being a Karma Cut. Um, I think he's going to end phase Karma Cut here. Yeah, end phase Karma Cut, discarding Seer. All the Karma Cut. I can appreciate how both of these players have pretty much like max rarity of their respective decks. Gotta love to see that. Can always appreciate that. And uh, Seer's going to go ahead and summon out Dante. There it is. The upstart goblin. Go ahead and draw. And what card does he draw? Soul Charge. It's like absolutely mind-boggling uh, card to be able to pick up off of that upstart. Why you play it? That 37 card deck. Because I believe upstart is definitely still at 3 at this point. And uh, Tour Guide. Also a pretty cracked card to have in hand. Going to take some time to go ahead and think about what he wants to summon. Looks like he's going to go for a graph. Um, and now the challenging part comes down to like, especially when you have a card like Soul Charge in your hand, it's like, how, how do you play Soul Charge right now to get the most value out of it? And how are you going to navigate these two back row, right? Like what could the two back row possibly be? Um, yeah, I think that El Shadal Fusion is out of the, out of the question. Um, because he doesn't have two Shadal monsters. Core is in Grave, so it's not like he could summon Core, then El Shadal to go into a fusion. And even if he does, what like what does that actually matter? Um, so like trying to play around these two back row are going to be like um, very very important. Ben does take a little bit of time here to actually think about uh, that. I assume uh, pro probably also trying to think about what he's going to do with the Soul Charge. Is he going to use it? Um, is he just going to go battle phase? Like what's the plan here? Um, and, you know, definitely taking that time to think is, like, very, very important. Um, and also, coming to the conclusion that probably doesn't have emptiness, because why let the tour guide resolve then at that point? There's almost, like, no reason to let the tour guide resolve. And, uh, so he's gonna go ahead and overlay for Dante. And he's gonna use Dante detaching the tour guide, milling three, hits nothing. And now we're gonna see him flip up the soul charge. And I think he goes for three here. And obviously not wanting to go for the graph, because if he goes for graph, he can't soul charge for three, which is important for reasons that you guys will see in just a moment. Um, another absolutely just disgusting card in the format, soul charge. Like, vanities and soul charge are both cards in this game, and it's just, like, so disgusting what these cards do. Uh, basically, turn to skips or just, like, monster reborn on crack. It's actually insane. Um, so we're going to see him overlay three for what has to be one of my favorite cards to ever have played in this deck. That's Tri-Edge Levia. Um, basically a rank three that takes three level threes, and it's not a once per turn. You can attach to negate a face-up monster your opponent controls, um, which is really, really strong. We see end phase shadow games from Jeff, um, and it's going to send Falco. Falco is going to reset itself. And I think this is about up to the point where I was watching. Just a few more minutes here, and then everything else I pretty much haven't seen. I'm just going to flip up the Falco. Target's Construct, I believe, is what he goes to do. And obviously try to reset it. Um, and then I think he's going to go ahead and negate here with the Triage Levy. Because you don't want that to resolve. You don't want him to get another body unveiled to be able to fusion with. Um, and I believe... Ben knows that Jeff has a Shadal Fusion hand because he added it back off that window when he went for the Shek. 
Um, so unfortunately, you cannot play around Shadal Fusion. I, he was probably thinking that, you know, when he went to resolve the tour guide, he's like, do I want to go into another Dante here or do I just like not uh, and make it a Shadal Fusion dead? Like that was definitely a viable option, but he's decided to go for like more, more like a aggressive route, if you will. Um, because even like if the two Dantes get cleared, he gets a ton of pluses. And like, even if the Levia gets cleared, there's so much good material underneath it that like, it's not going to matter a whole lot unless Jeff can actually kill him. Um, so we're going to see him go for a Construct, sending Squamata and a Danko. Uh, and then we're going to see him dump a uh, Beast off the Construct. And then Squamata's going to dump a Hedgehog. And he actually goes chain link, chain link 2 Hedgehog, Chain Link 1 Beast, which is interesting. you think most people do it the other way around. Kind of deck thin before you draw first. But I guess drawing a card, you know, seeing what you get makes it easier to decide what to search. So I totally understand that. And there's the Chaos Dragon Engine. Um, which is something that was like newly added into the deck and I think it was like uh, someone like Jeff that helped like kind of bring the spotlight to those cards in this deck the whole chaos engine uh, we're going to see him summon out black dragon he's going to synchro into HTS Psyhemoth I believe that's what that card is and I'm actually going to go ahead and pull up EDO Pro really quick here just so I can get that card uh, and read off the actual effect because uh, a lot of people might not know what this card is um, it was very, very popular at this time. Um, be able to synchro with the Falco that's level 2 tuner, summon out Black Dragon. Of course, White searches Black. We all know this from the countless Dragon Link matchups we've seen. Um, but HTS Psyhemoth basically says one tuner, one or more non tuners. After damage calculation, when this card battles an opponent's monster, you can banish that monster, also banish this card. So, 2400 attack. So, it can't get over Dante, but it doesn't matter because he's banishing it, anyways. But, but, he does have Triage Levia, so that's going to prove to be a challenge. And, um, he's going to go ahead and commit a normal summon to the dragon. Dragon's at 19, I believe Levia's at 16. So, that's going to prove to be a little rough. Um, actually, you know, I need to look up something. I, I, I don't like pausing a lot, but I want to check something. Um, oh, Triage Levy is at um, 1,800. But Triage Levy is a once per turn. Okay, I thought it wasn't a once per turn for some reason. Uh, if I, I think I said that earlier, so I just want to go ahead and correct myself here. It is a once per turn. So I was going to say, wh why didn't he just chain there and negate the, the Psyhemoth? But if that was the case, Jeff probably wouldn't have done that play because he knows it's going to get countered by uh, you know, the Levia. So Dragon being a very very good uh summon to get over that and it, it's like you need something other than uh Sihemoth to go over the um I, mean, I guess he could have gone over it with construct and then like if he had to worry about the negate even then it doesn't matter like this is going to clear the whole board one of the dantes is going to get banished by the Sihemoth, and then we're going to see him fuse into a window hit for more damage um and like this is just going to prove to be very very rough for ben at this point just showing how explosive the shadal strategy can actually be here i think they're just working out chain links here on what would be able to happen if like one of his monsters is actually going to be able to come out or not um i believe that's what's going on here but i just want to kind of rewind to that um because like dragon is huge for getting over the levia because it's at 19 so that means Sihemoth can get over something else um, because you need it to go over one of the Dantes. And I believe a Seer brought back an Alec. Um, so I just want to see this interaction happen again because I do have the video sped up a little bit. So we're going to see this Sihemoth go over uh, this Dante here with the graph underneath it. That Dante is going to get banished after damage calc. The Sihemoth is going to get banished as well. Uh, Construct is going to go over uh, the Dante. And then the Black Dragon over the Alec, I believe, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and then we're going to see him activate El Shadal. He's going to fuse away Black Dragon and Construct for Winda. And Ben does have a Seer. Um, so I, 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 I'm not sure what exactly... I think they're just sorting out Chain Links here. Um... Yeah, so they're going to go ahead and rewind. 
I, this is, I think this happened a little bit earlier. Just making sure they sort out like chain links properly. Yeah, so Winda is still summoned with Black Dragon and Construct. Search as White Dragon, Construct, add back L. Getting all those important resources back set to and pass. So like, he out of the entire board, established a Winda in the process, banished one of his Dantes with Saihemoth. Like, and has plenty of follow-up. He's got L, he's got White Dragon in hand. Um... Like, just so satisfying to watch, I'm telling you. Um, and this is one of those videos, too, that, like, doesn't have any commentary over. It's just, like, the background noise of the event, which I really, really love. Um, it's just kind of, like, white noise, and you can kind of hear the players talking, too, which I also really like, especially for matchups like these. And I also find it funny that, like, this isn't, like, the official top-down coverage like you guys saw in the last episode. This is, like, somebody else recording this. And I love how it's higher quality than the actual... ARG stream itself was. Now Ben's getting in a little bit like defensive mode here. Uh, he's gonna fuse off that that dragon in the end phase for a construct with white dragon constructs and beast. It's gonna clear a wing blast. Beast is gonna draw, draw for turn, basically pot of greed there. Super rough for Ben at this point. Uh, that last turn that Jeff had like oh my god put on so much pressure and put him in such a good position normal schemata puts him into a very very tough spot uh and then he's gonna go ahead and activate uh a core i think to go ahead and go for a game um but yeah it looks like ben's just gonna scoop because he can't out window at that point he doesn't have any follow-up um but yeah wow really really good game one a lot of back and forth like there was moments where like ben was gonna win then jeff and then back and forth um, that turn where Jeff pull, pulled out the Psyhemoth, um, out of the Levia, uh, the Levia, yeah, Triage Levia with the, uh, the, the Falco. You can't let the Falco resolve. Like, letting Falco resolve is, like, definitely a mistake. Something you definitely can't let happen. Um, but yeah. I hope you guys are liking this just as much as I am. Because, like, I love watching, like, 2014 era feature matches. I even kind of want to, like, build a deck and, like, play this format at some point. It'd be really, really fun. So, so nostalgic. So, I'm going to switch the camera battery and we'll go ahead and go to game two. All right, so here we are in game two. And no surprise, really, to see Jeff going first here. Um, if you're Ben, if you let him go first, you turn off Danko. And you turn off Shadal Fusion. So, like, I totally understand. Why and a six card for BA is not bad. Um... So we're going to go ahead and see him special summon graph and then tribute summon for a Majesty's Fiend. Wow, fresh out of Primal Origin. Um, we'll see if Jeff has the answer. He has breakthrough sk skill and it's a set squamata, so that's just going to go ahead and clear the, the Fiend. Anyways, Ben's going to set one pass. See if Jeff has any plays here. Keeping himself out of the extra deck, making any Shadal Fusions dead. Going to set one and turn. We're going to see an end phase trap, a wing blast, anything. Hmm? Thinking about it. He's definitely thinking about it. And that was the one thing you could always do in Burning Abyss too, was like just summon out a BA and then just tribute it for a fiend, whether it be Vanity's Fiend or in this case, Majesty's Fiend. That was something that like a lot of, a lot of the BA decks were doing. So we're going to see him activate wing blast on the back row, basically, you know, lock his draw next turn it's going to be that same card um so he's not going to get to see any newer cards so he's going to be basically working with the same cards that he had the previous turn so very very nice um we're going to go ahead and see him summon out a scarm i believe he pitched a graph off of that uh that wing blast now we're seeing him resolve allure things looking pretty good for ben here so far i'm going to banish an alec and then he's got another Another Majesty's Fiend, putting him on eating another Squamata, even though it wouldn't matter because now, now Majesty's Fiend is in full effect. But Jeff has a breakthrough skill in his grave. He's got a breakthrough skill in his grave, which could come in very, very clutch here. Um, but he needs a follow up to that, and he had to just draw the same card that he had last turn. Um, we're going to see him summon out the White Dragon, which I don't believe that is an effect to summon. I believe that's just like uh, a summoning condition, is just banishing, kind of like how the Crusadians summon themselves, I believe. Um, and then we're going to see him normal summon a dragon. Dragon has come in clutch more than once as a normal summon for Jeff so far. So you'd love to see that. Now, what rank four can he get into that's going to out this Majesty's Fiend? Because right now he cannot activate the effects of monsters. Um, 
So, like, I really don't know what he's going to go into. It looks like he's going to go into Castell. Oh, okay, I see now. Castell, breakthrough skill, get over it. All right. That makes much more sense now. I was like, how is he going to get... Oh, breakthrough skill. I was literally just talking about it earlier. And he's got another one for the tour guide. Okay. Um, he's got soul charge in hand, too. That could come in very, very clutch here in just a moment. Jeff's just going to go Castell, head over that. Pass. I mean, another interesting thing, too, there. Jeff could have also just left the Castell on his field um because he can't put any ba's on the board at that point because then they're just going to die um and that's not going to be very beneficial to ben's strategy and that puts him on needing another tour guide um and he also has a set background so he can't just summon ba's from hand at that point point. and i mean you guys you could argue that he could just crash but he's still losing his battle phase which is really good and giving him less life points to work with for soul charge and speaking of there it is and uh you cannot soul charge back the fiends, because I believe all the fiends say they cannot be special summoned. Um, and for good reason, unless there's one that says it can be. But we're going to see him summon back. Uh, Graf, Graf, Skarm. A 3,000. And we'll see him going to Dante. He's got to out this... He has to out this cast elf. So actually, he doesn't really have to out it, because like he has Downer Magician. Um, and Downer Magician can go right over top of the Dante. So if he even does spin it back, the Dante is still going to hit the grave, and that's all that matters. Um, also, playing into Shadal Fusion right now, but at this point, you really don't have an option. If he's got Shadal Fusion, he's got Shadal Fusion. You've kept him off of it for this long. Um, and, like, he's got to access his engine at some point. If the uh, two Majesty's Fiends have been outed, like, there's not much else you can do. Uh, he's going to mill one. It's going to be a graph. I already used graph this turn, I believe, so he can't use it again. End phase Skarm for a Seer here, uh, which is going to be really clutch. As you can Seer at this turn, and you know, if it gets uh, removed by one of Jeff's cards, and then he has it for a follow-up next turn. Does Jeff have the Shadal Fusion, though? That's that's what I'm curious to see. Because <clears throat> he has Shadal Fusion, it helps him a metric ton here. If he, if he can play through this board. Though. We have no idea what the sets are for Ben. Could be Wing Blast, Karma Cut, Emptiness, or Fire Lake. Um, and we're actually going to see him book a Dante. Econ, Tribute off Castell. He's going to take the Dante. And he's going to detach the graph and mill two. Mill three. Milling two Mathematician and a BLS. That is unfortunate. And the reason he did that there was to i mean booking the uh, dante so that whatever he summoned off the graph was going to auto die um and he couldn't keep board presence um because that set monster is not a burning abyss monster that's why book of moon used to be so good against the eba deck um but it looks like jeff's just going to go ahead and scoop there anyways realizing that uh next turn ben's going to have a lot of follow-up and the set card was probably a beast because anytime you see tribute set in shadals uh it's probably a beast um, that used to be like a really cool play people did back in the day to like in the mirror match specifically you'd like make Winda turn one or construct and then you'd tribute set uh, over top of your Shadal monster for a beast making their Shadal fusions dead and then if they hit your Shadal beast you get a draw uh, and a or a, you get the draw if it hits the grave via card effect or next turn if it survive you flipped up draw two discard one which would be a huge boost to your engine. Uh, so let's go ahead and see the epic conclusion to this match. One and one here. Uh, we're going to see Jeff make Ben go first. Just interesting. Like, these are both decks that nowadays love to go first. And the fact that, like, the deck that can go first is making the other deck can go first go first. Instead of, like, trying to go first. But, like, you got to respect cards like Shadal Fusion. You need to make that card live. Or you force your opponent to try and play around it. Which makes them, you know, have a little bit of a, a subpar end board. Kind of like what we're seeing here. Allure, banish a Skarm, draw two, set a monster, pass. Jeff not doing too much either here, setting two back row, a monster, and passing. Um, this actually reminds me, uh, my friend Adam was actually telling me about a, a pure Shadal deck that people have been playing again, where you basically kind of like set set, and that's like your end board, uh, and you have like Shadow Games and a, a Shadal monster. It seems pretty cool um, to like play like an old school like uh, style of like mid-range Shadal without like the dogmatica stuff and without all the invoke stuff at least without the uh, the invoke stuff i might still play the dogmatica stuff i'm not sure uh, but it looks like we're gonna go and see attempt to summon cow cab uh, because i believe these guys activate uh when they try to summon you do have to reveal looks like he's gonna change shadow games and 
be interesting to see what the set is because he can flip up uh, with shadow games on top of sending. We'll see what he's going to go ahead and send here. I know he's not going to send shit all hound. I know that much. And it looks like he's looking at beast to go ahead and potentially draw a card. And he's going to flip up that. Okay, so flip his commander. That's going to pop Calcab. And since Calcab was special summon via its first effect, it cannot spin a back row. I love how he can just like line his cards up there since columns literally don't matter at this point. And uh, put him on needing another BA. He does have it. It's Alec. Um, so he gets the draw off of Beast. Go for Dante. Dante detached Graph, of course. Mill 3, does he hit anything other than Spells and Traps? It looks like he can't 1 BA there, but it's not to be... Actually, it is something that he can use, it looks like, on top of that uh, Upstart Goblin and uh, Wing Blast that he milled. Looks like he milled a Seer. Really good mill. Um, really solid mill. And then he's going to go ahead and summon a Seer off of the Graph that just hit the Grave. Probably one of the best mills you could ask for right there, to be totally honest. Now we can go ahead and establish another Rank 3. The question is what Rank 3 to go into. I mean, it's probably going to be another Dante. Or he's going to go for Triage Levy again. That's, that's a possibility. But, like, Triage Levy didn't really work out too well. Game 1... I mean, to be honest, I'm not even sure why he went for that. Um, I mean, I get it, but, like... Like, it would have been good, but, like, he just had... Like, HTS Sahim was such a good card there. Um, I mean, I don't blame him for going for it. I'm not... I'm definitely not going to say it was, like, an incorrect play, but, like, what else do you go for at that point? Um, yeah, so it looks like he's just going to go battle phase. He's got two 2,500 Dantes and um, a Seer on board, which is nice. And we might just see Downer Magicians go over top of these. Attack over, and then 25-25. Punching for 5,000 damage. That's a lot. Those Dantes are going to slide into defense position there in main phase 2. No Downer. It's okay. Then we're going to see him end phase Scarf for one and only TGU. Oh, there's one in the graveyard, one there. So yes, this TGU is definitely at 3 currently. 100%. Cuts the deck. Let's see what Jeff has this turn. No interruptions, just a lot of floaters. A lot of them. He's got double Dante. He's got an Alex. So that's a negate at some point. So he technically does have an interruption there in the form of Alec. Negate off the Alec. Two recursions off of Dante. A summon off of the Graph. And a revive off of Seer. Like, there's so many cards that float here into other things. So much advantage to be gained off of all of these cards if they're removed. On top of that, he's got two guide. Like, how do you navigate this board where you can put yourself in a position, like, a winning position from this point? And, um, looks like he has a Shadow Games in hand. That's probably not going to do him too much. And setting those other two cards down on the table. Sometimes I do that too. Like, if your hand is, like, not super great, sometimes, like, just, like, Taking some cards out of your hand that you definitely know for a fact you're not doing anything with can kind of help you think more clearly about the other cards in your hand because you don't have to look at the other cards and kind of taking away your focus. Might sound a little, I don't know, but like, it can help. It can help if you're in one of those, like, big think situations. So we'll see here. How, like, this is tough. Like, this is so tough. It might not look tough. It's not like... Sphere's Savage Tidying board, but, like, same time. The board that needs addressing. You certainly can't leave all the cards there. It looks like he's got White Dragon. I think... I don't know. It looks like a Shadal Fusion in hand. I could be wrong. Summons White Dragon. Vanishes Beast. And, honestly, if he doesn't have something like Shadal Fusion at this point, it's going to be very hard to even break this board. Um, I think I saw a Black Dragon in hand, too, so that's very unfortunate to see. Uh, the number of dark monsters heavily outweighs the number of light monsters in this deck. Um, so that's not going to be a good card to see right here. He's going to go ahead and attack into the Seer. Seer's going to go ahead and summon out Skarm from the graveyard. And yeah, I mean, what else can you really do in this position here? Um, we're going to see him tribute set. And then he's going to banish white, summon black. And... Not looking too happy here if you're Jeff. So, like, he's just going to set another card and hope and hope that's going to be enough. 
Uh, it's probably not going to be unless those are some crazy back row he's got set back there. But uh, now, see if Ben can close it out. I mean, he's got he's got Graf underneath that Dante in the middle there. So that's going to get him into another rank three. So he's going to start with that Dante milling three. Um, hits two Vanities, fiend, uh, Emptiness, and a Majesty's Fiend. Going to go ahead and summon out a Rubik. Is this going to be the first time we're actually seeing a Virgil in this entire video? 43-minute video. Virgil's going to come out now. I, yeah, this is probably going to... This is 100% going to be game here if he doesn't have anything. If those back row are bluff, this is 100% game. Because Jeff also did take uh, 5,000 damage the previous turn from those two Dantes. So now we're going to see Synchro 6. Yes, Virgil makes an appearance. And now he's going to secure that Scarm end phase. And checking those back, or I hope there's something, man. So yeah, the Econ's going to be pretty helpful, but also, unfortunately, the video actually ends right here. Um, which is unfortunate, because this was such a good match. Um, I honestly still don't think it matters. I'm going to go ahead and said, say Ben is actually still going to win this match just based on the cards that he has. Like, he still has Tour Guide in hand. Um, he hasn't even committed his normal summon yet. So I think this game is still just as good as over. Um, yeah, I just, I don't think it's it's actually going to make a difference here whether Econ's and takes that or not. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think Ben actually wins this one. If anybody knows for a fact, let me know down in the comments below. It's unfortunate the video really just ends right here so abruptly. I wish it would have kept going, but it is what it is. Um, very, very awesome match. It's a pleasure commentating over this one, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one with me. If you did, leave a like, and don't forget to check out one of the two videos popping up on the bottom of the screen right now. And as always, Winter Kill signing out. We'll see you guys in the next one. Lastly, a huge shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members, and they are Cadillacs84, Pony Start, Keith Sidgers, Tweeter0226, and Black Ninja Money. Thank you guys so much, as always, for your extremely generous support.